this is my first knife from them. And if this is the level of quality they have, then holy cow, companies need to watch out because these guys are coming for them. Bang, Neves Knives. I'm Jared and we got the Migaron Knives Palos review. Now, this knife is built extremely, extremely well. I want to say that right off the bat, and I'll go into it really deep, but I do have a couple concerns, complaints that we'll talk about when we get into the bad. First off, this has a straight back blade. You don't see that a ton these days. I mean, we see it every once in a while, but a straight back design makes for a very strong blade shape. Now, this blade shape was originally designed for workers and farming and, you know, just... um construction and work you know for it to be a very strong blade shape for cutting rope and things like that where a drop point was more of a jack of all trades so this is kind of like a stronger version of a drop point blade you know a little less utility task more stronger in the tip you know maybe for picking and prying and things like that now this doesn't have a ridiculous thick blade stock or anything and it is m390 the titanium frame lock has really heavy milling that feels really comfortable in the hand and it does have a very very nice texture now you see we have the blue carbon fiber it looks really really good and the inlay is extremely well done fit very nicely and on the opposite side we have the titanium milled pocket clip and backspacer and another inlay to match the opposite side and then you can see the blue pivot Looks really good, nice and attractive, and we have a gold pivot collar. Now, getting into the action before we get into the ergo. So it is a front flipper. So we have the jimping that is well placed, and I also like that it wraps around the top. Now, it you know, it doesn't have to go all the way back here, but as long as it passes this corner, because a lot of times when you use a front flipper, your thumb lands in that corner right there. So it is very easy to use and the, the front flipping action is really good. Um, I find that it, it, it's not a large knife, first of all. This is not a big knife. This is more of a medium sized knife. So it fits really nice right in your palm, really nicely. And it's just natural that your thumb lands right there, right where the front flipper is. Now, um, depending on your hand size too. Now we do have thumb studs. And you, it does, uh, it, it's slightly raised above the scales, but not so much to where it snags on anything or anything like that. So they're easy to get to, easy to use, and you can reverse flick it or thumb flick it. Now the access to the lock bar, very easy access, nice, comfortable lock bar too, which in my opinion, when you get a good quality knife, the feeling of the lock bar and the disengage is very important to a, um, a knife that feels like quality. When you feel the nice soft lock bar, like sometimes you go to, a, go to hit the lock bar and it's sharp, it pokes you, it's jabby. You can feel little sharp corners everywhere. This is not like that. It's very soft very contoured and very easy to access so nice to get to and then the detent when you unlock it is nice and early so when you unlock it it's usually always past that detent ball and the detent ball i'm talking about is right here it's the detent that you know gives you a little tension in order to flick it open it's what locks it closed right there so when you unlock it you have to hit that detent again, and it's easy to get past it. That The drop on the knife, very smooth. Um, a couple shakes, and it's shut. And you hardly even have to shake it. You see I'm not, like, forcing it down or anything. It's very, very smooth. And if I do give it any influence, it'll just drop shut. I mean, it's very, very smooth. Now... Getting into the Ergos, it is a thin, compact knife. It's not a big knife. And just do a quick size comparison, it is the size of the bug out. So that gives you a really good size reference right there. It's basically the exact same size as the bug out in length. So the handle length is basically going to be very similar. However, it is um, not as tall this way 
and slightly thicker this way, but nice and comfortable in the hand. Obviously, I feel the clip because it is a clip and it's there and it's just that size of a knife to where you're going to feel the clip. But all these areas are nice, knocked down, chamfered, very soft, and it's relatively comfortable in the hand. Aside from feeling the clip quite a bit, you know, everything else is pretty good. And if I hold it in like pinch grips like this or whatever, it's really comfortable. Now, cutting performance. Okay, so... Um, originally when it first came, you know, I used it quite a bit before I showed this cut test and it did get dull fairly quick. It didn't come with the sharpest edge. I'll be honest. The edge was not that great from the factory. So it didn't take long for this thing to get very dull. And you can see me trying to cut through this cardboard and it's basically just tearing and ripping it. But after you know you can see how it kind of tears and rips and things like that and it's just because the blade is not sharp but after i did sharpen it which we'll get into here in just a moment it uh it cut pretty well um no real issues it's not a real tall blade and it is 20 thousandths behind the edge so it doesn't have amazing geometry but it's decent it's okay it's still in my opinion in the okay category where i'm not going to say that this has bad geometry or that it doesn't make sense it's still perfectly fine and it cuts very well um now the fuller you are going to get a tiny bit of resistance that's with any fuller so but you know it cuts really well not an issue and you do get quite a bit of leverage into your cuts because it's a straight back you know not only the spine of the blade but also the spine of the handle so that's going to distribute weight across your palm evenly so it's going to be easy to put tension even into um somewhat of a small knife so now with utility cuts this is not a utility cutting blade so i really it, I'm not going to be able to do justice showing the utility cuts, but you can do it. It's just you're not going to have a lot of leverage into your cuts. This is a straight back blade. It's not specifically made for utility cuts. However, you can do them if you need to. You just need to hold the knife upright, straight up and down, and have a lot of pressure down into the cut. The problem is, is you lose leverage when you do that pulling back through the cut, but you can do it. Um, without a doubt, you can do it. Um, so, you know, it, it, when you have to do it, it, it'll work just fine. And for opening packages, cutting tape and things like that, it'll, you know, it'll work, right? <laughs> it'll work just fine. But where this thing is going to shine most is, you know, slicing, push cuts, uh, rope cuts, things like that. The clip, clip and carry. So the titanium milled clip works in and out of the pocket great so it's very smooth the ramp is nice the tension is good so and you do have a little something to kind of hang on to to put in and out of the pocket so it works great nice and smooth um i do kind of wish they chamfered this like kind of like this right there in the corner uh because in the grip of your hand it would help you know, um, it's not really bad to be honest because it's kind of short. So it's not like it pokes me right here. Like a lot of them do. This one sits right there. So it's really not that bad, but you know, just future things, but, uh, but no, in the pocket, it does work great. We do have a, a problem though, that I'm going to talk about here in a second. The, the fit and the finish, the fit and the finish is very, very well done. All the, like I said, all, everything's knocked down very well. The lockup, very, very solid. No play, any direction. Um, now, let's talk about some bad things. So, some negative things. One, T6s. I do not like T6s. I'd rather see T8s. We do have a T8 pivot, but everything else is T6s. Just go with T8s, guys. And I do want to say this. Before I really get into this stuff, I appreciate Migaron Knives sending me this knife. Um, I should have said that in the beginning. I appreciate them uh, sending it to a knife reviewer that tests knives and uh, really talks about the good and the bad. I think that really shows a lot about the company and um, and it shows that that they uh, 
that they trust their product, but not just that, that they're, they're willing to take criticism. And that, that's, that, that right there is something I stand behind and I want to, to put money into. That's something I obviously I want to invest in or that I want to support. I want to support good behavior from knife companies. Now, anything that I say that's negative, the best thing they could do is take it into consideration and and do better and then that way and then also continue to send that person knives don't make it where it's like oh they spoke bad about my knife now i won't send them another knife because then that makes you look bad that makes you look bad as a company the best thing you could do is to look for the integrity look because the community knows if you if you guys don't think the community knows like which you know like from the the knife reviewers that have a lot of integrity and the companies that deal with them and the ones that avoid them you're you're a fool because they do they recognize that and they see that they see the the knife reviewers that play to the companies you know just uh just to get stuff or whatever so you see it all over where knife companies actually deal with reviewers that that will give them the best information possible to help them with their product they take it to consideration and then continue dealing with that person so that they can get an honest honest opinion and it only helps them in the future i'm beating a dead horse let's get right into some more negative things one not the centering wasn't perfect really not that big of a deal i did try to adjust it a little bit i didn't work on it too hard but it's it's not it's fine it's not rubbing it's pretty close and like right now i've been using and sharpening and everything with it so it's a little bit more off than it was i can actually probably just tighten the pivot a little bit more but it was slightly off before but I, i've been i had it at work and lots of other things but, but from when I got it, it was slightly off. That's that's what I meant to say. Um, so next thing, the thumb studs are slippery. They're not the most grippy. If you can see, there's no texture on the top. So I find myself doing that where I slip the first time and then I got to catch it. So with the reverse flick, I don't really get that. Just because my finger just lands just perfectly right there in that little groove right here. But with the thumb flick, I find myself doing that. Now, I know it's slick, so I'm pretty good at not doing that anymore. And I'm really good at firing it, except for that time, <laughs> firing it every time. But they're slick. They could use some texture. Now, the biggest thing, the biggest issue I have with this, it's a twofold. One, we have a plunge grind issue here. Now, that wouldn't be a, such a big issue if this next part, and we're going to talk about sharpening here in a second, because there, there's a little negative thing with the sharpening, but the plunge grind is not good. You see I sharpened it, and now you see there's a smile growing, right? That's only first edge. That's one sharpening in, and you can see it's getting a smile going up the blade right here. Now, normally I would say, okay, I'll cut in a choil. We can't. We can't cut in a choil because the stop pin lands right on the edge. Let me pull out my little flashlight. Shout out to Talica. You see how it lands right behind the edge. Literally right here. Sorry. It lands directly right here. So I've already sharpened it once. How many more sharpenings am I going to get before? Well, one, I'm not going to want to sharpen it again without putting in a choil. Two, because now my smile, the next sharpening, my smile is going to be real big. It'll be all the way up to here. So I want to cut in a choil. Now I'm not saying don't get this. I'm not saying that this is so bad. Don't buy it. I'm not saying that at all. This is really good. There, what we can do about it is one you know, hopefully the company moves the stop pin in the future. But what we can do is we have to mark this area and cut the choil in in front of it. So what we'll have to do is leave this area alone and cut in a little choil right here directly in front of the edge. So basically wipe this part of the edge out and make a little choil there. That's, that's the only way to do it. Because in order for it to stop like that and stay closed without getting any detent lash or over traveling when it stops 
we have to hit that stop pin. So this would have been better if the stop pin was back here or an internal stop pin or something like that. Now, let's talk about the sharpening and the little issue with the sharpening. So it does have a recurve. Now, I, it's, I, I wouldn't complain about a recurve, but this is kind of like an unintentional recurve. So if you look, you can actually see, hold on, let me go right here. You can see how it's thick back here, and then it gets thin right here, and then it starts getting thicker again. Now, I straightened it out when I sharpened it, but it took a while. Like, it took me probably 30 minutes on my first stone to, to, to line it up because, and you can see, I actually still have a little part back there I need to hit. You see that shining back at me? It is very difficult to hit, um, but it's, it recurves up right here. So like on the stone, I was hitting here and here, but not in the middle because like if you laid it flat, it recurves up. You can actually kind of see how it does that. And it's so small, but I, I would have rather them just make a straight edge. You know, what do we need that little recurve for? That little recurve does nothing but make it diff more difficult to sharpen. So now sharpening it, putting it on the stone, you know, that was the one issue is I had to spend so much time reprofiling it and straightening that out. And, you know, I mostly got it for the most part, but you know, it, it's still there a little bit and you can kind of, you can see it. You can see how this part of the edge goes down a little bit right here. It goes, ah, my damn thing. But yeah, you can see how it goes down right here. Now, on the stone, the steel felt pretty good. Now, I will say it sharpened up just fine. It took a really sharp edge. It is on a low grit. I did not go very high. I, I will say it, it was okay. But I would like to see them increase the HRC. I don't think it's a very high HRC. I think it's possibly lower um, like 58, 59. That's just my guess. I have no way to prove that. And like I said, it was fine. Sharp enough, just fine. Um, but, and also remember that was the first edge. So, you know, sometimes it does take two edges to get into some good quality steel after it being heat treated and sharpened on a belt from the factory, etc. So it could change. It could. I could sharpen it one more time and be like, ooh, now this steel feels really good. So that, that is a strong, a strong possibility. But, you know, from my first experience on the stone, I would say it was okay. You know, it wasn't great. wasn't horrible. It was okay. You know, it felt okay on the stone. And it came out, you know, pretty good. Um, now, other than that, though, you know, and also one other thing. One other thing. I'm sorry. The pocket clip shifts. So that is a thing I did screw it down as tight as possible. Now I have to push it pretty hard to get it. And I didn't even notice that until uh, somebody else pointed that out. Now, when I squeeze it like this, I personally don't really feel it shifting. Um, but that's my hand. The person that told me said that when they squeezed it, they felt it shifting back and forth. And you see it right there. When I squeeze it, it doesn't move. So... You know, two screws is better than one always, or, or the big thing, inset it into the titanium and make sure it fits good. Cause this one is inset. However, there's a lot of room in there. Since there's room inside that little cutout, it makes it where this thing shifts all over the place. So, uh, but if you bought this, you know, I hope you're not taking my criticisms and saying you, you, that you think you did a bad purchase. I'm, this is a great knife. It really is. Yes, there are some improvements that I think could be made to the design overall, but that doesn't stop it from being a very quality knife. Like I, I, I do like this knife quite a bit and I show it off because it's impressive and it looks good and it feels good in the hand. And, you know, a lot of people are drawn to it. Like just looking at it, it looks great. It, uh, you know, it does hit a lot of places and you can tell these guys make, inc they do incredible work. You can totally tell they do incredible work. There's just a couple 
little tiny design flaws that could be improved. Now, does that mean I don't like this knife? Hell no, I love this knife. I think this knife is awesome. I really do. Um, and yeah, I just, you know, I, I hope that I continue to see what Migoron Knives does. And I hope they continue to send knives that I can uh, review uh, because they have a lot of damn potential. I mean, this, this is my first knife from them. And if this is the level of quality they have, then holy cow, companies need to watch out because these guys are coming for them. I mean, that this is very good quality. Um, but yeah, there you guys go. I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.